Hello, we're, uh, today we're going to be making a beam with uh, a variable uh, cross-section and variable moment of inertia. So the first thing we do in MassDen is add the nodes. So I'm putting a node in at 0, 0, 0 in the 3D Cartesian coordinate space. Next node goes in at uh, 120 inches. The next node at uh, 240 inches. And finally one at 360 inches. So this defines the uh, layout of the nodes. Then I can connect these nodes with elements to start inputting the beam. All right, now let's uh, attach some supports. So I'm going to fix this node X and Y. So this is the roller, or sorry, this is the pin on this side. And then on the other side, I will apply a roller. So I'll click here, and now I'm just going to support it in the Y direction. Apply. Um, you can. see the X and Y coordinates right here, so this is the X and the Y. So this is a 2D planar problem, so we're not worrying about the, three, the third direction. The Z direction is out of the, out of the screen here. Oh, actually, um, I just realized that I put the support in the wrong spot, so let's go back and fix that. So here, I can click here like that and remove. Press apply, and now it's gone. I actually want to put the support here. This location supported in Y. This is the roller. Okay, uh, now we need to define the section properties. And for section one, so since we're not really worried about the axial stiffness, I can put in really whatever I want. This is just the area of the the beam member that we're the first beam member that we're studying. IZZ is the moment of inertia about the z-axis, so that's about kind of the, the strong axis, the axis of bending in this 2D element, so that it's maybe bending like this or something, right? So the stiffness in this direction is the IZZ. And uh, that uh, moment of inertia is 1,800 inches to the fourth. Uh, again, we're not really worried about the bending in and out of the plane, so we could put in whenever we want, uh, just put in the same thing. J is the synchronon torsional constant. Um, I'll just put this uh, a non-zero value in here. I, I don't even think I think you can leave it as zero. But um, and the rest of these are uh, plastic moduli that are for inelastic analyses, um, and these are the shear areas, uh, which allow you to include shear deformation if you want to. But that's kind of beyond the scope of what we're doing here. We're just doing a simple analysis. So I've defined uh, section one as uh, we can call this. Uh, let's call this skinny. This is the skinny section. Okay, now let's uh, define another section. So this is section two. Again, don't really uh, care about the area. We just care about the moment of inertia. The moment of inertia here is uh, 3,600 inches to the fourth. Again, we can put this in. It doesn't. Um, doesn't really matter because we're only doing a 2D analysis. We can put in, fill these, make these non-zero, press apply. Um, now the last thing is let's define the uh, material. So the material is, uh, let's say it's steel, and the modulus of elasticity for steel is 29,000 KSI, modulus, uh, or the Poisson ratio is 0 0.3. 
and we're not including anything here. We're not. If we wanted to include self weight, we could include the density of the material um, that we're using, uh, or uh, we could also include the yield stress. But as I mentioned, we're assuming this is a linear elastic analysis. All right, so we have the material defined. Now we want to just go ahead and attach all of these materials. So let's first attach the material. So this whole member is steel, so we can click all. We have steel here. So now we've defined all of these uh, elements that make up the, the beam as um, steel. But we know that we want to attach the cross sections, and we know that uh, this member is skinny. So we apply that. And these two members are well, I forgot to name it. I didn't give it a name, but anyway, it's section two. We could have called it the, uh, the chunkier one, I guess. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. But anyway, so now we have that um, defined. So this member is um, has a higher moment of inertia than this member. All right, so we've defined the boundary conditions. We've def defined the nodes. We've defined the connectivity. Now what we need to do is um, apply the loads. So we can go to here, define fixities, apply a node here. And, oh, so I'm not doing this right. We want to define forces, sorry. Define forces. We want to define a force here. The force is uh, in the y direction, right? So in the negative y direction is, and it's minus 60 kips. Apply. Now, um, we want to apply another force here, and this force is minus 40 in the y direction, so minus 40, plus apply. And so now we have everything defined. Uh, I should mention that, notice that we've uh, defined the nodal coordinates so that they, the nodal coordinates and the modulus of elasticity and the loads, so they all have the same units. So we use, define the nodal coordinates in inches. So this is 0, this is 360 inches. We have defined the modulus of elasticity in 29,000 kips per inch squared. We define the moment of inertia as inches to the fourth, and we've defined the forces in terms of kips. So we're all consistent, and so when we get our output and look at uh, the displaced shape and the behavior, we'll know that we have uh, inches, for instance, for displacements, kip inches for moment, and kips for uh, shear. So let's save this. Save this um, in my theory of structures class and so let's call this uh, this was an exam problem so this is exam two problem two actually I'll put it in the exam folder all right so now we are going to ready to run the analysis we're going to run a first order elastic analysis we're running a planar frame which means a 2d analysis we're not worrying about the third dimension and and the planar frame assumes continuity and connectivity between elements, so we can carry moment and shear across each one of these elements. Press apply, we see that the analysis is complete, and now we can do lots of things. We can look at, for instance, the displaced shape. And if the scale is not appealing to us, we want to really see what's going on, we can uh, crank up the scale and see that the displaced shape looks something like this. Um, if we wanted to animate this, which is very fun, we could press apply and now we can watch uh, this all day. All right, we have to close that window to get back to the main screen. Uh, like, let's look now at the uh, shear diagram. So it's shear in the Y, right? So shear in the Z is out of plane shear. We don't have any of that because we're working on a 2D. So we have a shear diagram, looks like this. And we have a moment diagram. So it's moment in the, about the Z, right? So where it's a moment, if you use the right-hand rule, point your thumb in the Z direction, and that's the moment that we're cranking on this beam, right? This is the moment diagram. So we have um, a negative moment over, um, or we have a positive moment uh, up to this location. Then we have negative moment over the support. And vice versa. So if you are more comfortable drawing the 
the um, moment on the, uh, the tension side versus the compression side, you can switch the diagram. So this is, feels somehow more comfortable to me, but um, typically the way we teach it is this way. All right, and that is it. And, and so if we wanted to uh, explore, um, for instance, speci specific nodal um, reactions and displacements, we could um, f f uh, take a look, like click on uh, individual nodes. So for instance, we can click here and look at the rotation. Um, the maybe it makes more sense to have the deflected shape up here while we're uh, looking at the nodal coordinates. So now if I go to nodal displacements, I can click here and I can get the, uh, there, obviously there's no dis displacement, translational displacement, there's a rotation, and this is in, um, in radians. If we wanted to uh, look at the reaction at that location. We can also go nodal reactions and, and look at the reactions that we have here. So we have a reaction here of, of uh, 10. So it's a positive 10 pushing up, right? Here we have a reaction of 90. And it should add up to 100, which it does, which is uh, good news. Um, yeah, so that's uh, how you would implement a uh, beam uh, in Mastan and run a first order uh, elastic analysis.